Thanks for joining me, this is Danny, and welcome back to my modded 1.12.2 series. Today we are going to be playing with RF Tools Dimensions. Hooray! So we're going to be making some dimensions, we're going to be making some other worlds, and we're going to be doing a bunch of exploring in those dimensions and trying to make some that are like interesting and fun. And we're also going to be doing some resource gathering in those dimensions, and perhaps getting some really, really large amounts of some really rare stuff. First of all, we're going to need a lot of RF. I'm using XNet to get our RF into our system. We're going to have to upgrade the system as we go along. But to get started to make our very, very first dimension, um, this is the very bare minimum that we're going to need. Um, we're going to, going to need a matter transmitter and receiver from RF tools, along with a dialing device. So we've played with these in the past um, just to teleport they're teleportation devices that we're using to teleport to different places in our world, like to the nether, to the deep dark, and around our base and stuff too. Um, we're also using this advanced charge porter. Oops, I was standing on an elevator. <laughs> we're also using this advanced charge porter to get places. Um, and we'll take a look at how that, we'll take another look at how this works in a bit. And then to make the dimensions, to make like the first <laughs> dimension that we make, we're going to need a dimension inscriber and a dimension builder and a bunch of empty dimension tabs. So um, the dimension builder is probably about the most expensive part of this. We're going to need a couple ender pearls, some emeralds and diamonds. Um, so this isn't something that you're going to be doing early game. Um, you're going to be doing this like mid to late game, um, mostly because of the RF needs. So very quickly, I'm going to set up the matter transmitter and receiver and very briefly explain um, how they work because we've played with these before. So um, so the matter receiver is basically a teleportation receiving block. So we can teleport to a matter receiver um, from a matter transmitter. So the matter transmitter is a teleportation sender, basically. So it will send the player on to a destination. So I'm going to put our matter transmitter there. Both of these guys will need RF. Um, it's going to consume a little bit of RF every time it teleports us from this matter transmitter. And the receiver will also consume a small amount of RF um, when it receives us. Actually, the matter transmitter could consume quite a bit of RF if it's tr teleporting us a long distance. Then we're going to need the dialing device to dial the destination for our matter transmitter. I have XNet connectors connected to all of these things, so I can go into XNet. And I already have a power channel set up. And I'm already extracting from this power cell, so now we just need to we need to insert, insert, and insert. So all these guys should be now getting power. Hooray! <laughs> and now when we open our dialing device, we can see um, our matter transmitter that's close by. In fact, if we give this a name, let's say we call this transport hub matter transmitter. If we look in here, we will see that it has the name transport hub, and then we can do the same with the receiver, and we can call this transport hub as well, since it's a receiver, and um, we can give them both the same name. So we have a transport hub sender, and we have a transport, hu transport hub receiver. So we select our transport hub, and then we select a destination. So let's say we want to dial to <laughs> that receiver. So we can select our transport hub, and we can select a destination. So let's say we just want to go from our transport hub sender to our transport hub receiver. We can just say dial. So we can see this thing is glowing now, telling us that we've got a destination dialed in. And when we stand on it, it's going to teleport us over here. <laughs> and as you can see, we're facing in the same direction. So if we were facing in this direction, we will still be facing in that same direction. Um, obviously, that's not a very interesting teleportation because it's not very far, <laughs> but whatever. So you get the idea. So we can teleport to any of these other destinations that we'd already set up. We have our quarry, which is in a different dimension, which is going to require more power to send us to a different dimension. The other way to use these matter receivers is with this advanced charge porter. This is something we made a while ago also, and this allows us to teleport to different destinations um, from anywhere in the world just by holding this charge porter. Um, right now, I've got it. If I shift right click, we can see that I have three destinations set up. So we can set up another another destination by shift right clicking on there. So receiver four is added to the charge porter, and we can say set. And now we can go anywhere. <laughs> we can go far, far away. We can go to another dimension, whatever. And once we right click on it, it's going to take us back here. Hooray! So that's the basics of <laughs> RF tools teleportation. Um, so so we can interrupt this. Now, if we want to go someplace and we know that we're only going to go there once, we can always do a 
dial once, and then basically what it'll do is when we teleport, it'll just undial itself so that we don't have to we don't have to worry about accidentally walking across the beam and getting teleported. So now we're gonna get our dimension inscriber, our dimension builder, and an empty dimension tab. We'll take a look at dimlets in a little while. Um, but let's just start with this. So I'm going to set up our dimension inscriber um, uh, over here in the corner. And I'm going to set up a dimension builder right here. And that's it. So the dimension scriber is what we're going to use to define our dimensions. So we put a dimension tab in here. And we can, we can set dimlets up here in order to define how this dimension is going to be built and what kind of dimension it's going to be, what sort of things it's going to have, and that sort of thing. If we don't put any dimlets in there and we s say store, we will basically be creating a random dimension. Actually, let me give this one a name. So we're just going to call this random number one. We'll say store. So we've just created a random dimension. And if we look, we're going to see that every dimension has a set of costs to it. So we have a creation cost, which is 1,000 RF per tick, which means that when, while we're creating this dimension, we're going to be consuming 1,000 RF per tick. And once the dimension is created, we're going to have a maintenance cost of 10 RF per tick. So that's a really cheap dimension. That just basically means that as long as this dimension is active and running, it's going to cost us 10 RF per tick to keep it powered. Because RF tools dimensions need to be powered in order to remain safe <laughs> and viable. Because um, if they run out of power, you'll die in there and everything will basically grind to a halt. Um, and we can also see the tick cost is 100 ticks, meaning that's how long it's going to take to create this thing. So it's going to take five seconds, basically, to create this dimension. And during those five seconds, it's going to be costing us 1,000 RF. So to create the dimension, we then put it in this dimension builder, which is going to need power. The dimension builder is going to need a lot of power. Um, as as we go on so we we'll, we'll probably have to upgrade our power system here um, in order to accommodate but you can see it has a buffer of 10 million um, and when we create our dimension tab or when we put our dimension tab in here it's going to start pulling power out of the buffer of the dimension builder and it's going to start creating our dimension so we are 99 percent done we are now 100 percent done so now you can see that it's sucking a whole bunch of power and that is because the dimension itself has a power buffer of 40,000 RF. So it's filling up that buffer right now. And you don't really want to go into that dimension until it has a considerable amount of power uh, because you don't, obviously, you don't want the dimension to run out of power while you're in there. But now this dimension is created. We can do a shift right click while we're holding the dimension tab in our hands and we can find out stuff about the dimension. So we created a completely random dimension, which means that it, it gave it all these different features and properties randomly. So this is <laughs> the base seed. Um, the terrain type is chaotic. The terrain type is basically like what the like the base, the ground. So like it could be a flat terrain, it could be a amplified terrain, just like when you're creating a world um, in vanilla Minecraft. Um, but this is basically creating another dimension. And it's called chaotic, and we'll see what that looks like when we get there. Um, this, the base block is stone. So that's basically, that's the default block. So like the normal world would have a base block of stone. Um, you, we'll, we will find as we move forward that we can use all kinds of different base blocks. Um, tendril block. So we have tendrils in this dimension that were just randomly selected, and they're made of redwood. Redwood wood. <laughs> And we also have some orbs that are made of obsidian and crystal. We have other orbs that are made of cobblestone and bricks triple. Some, we have some clay orbs. And we have some netherrack orbs. And we have a base fluid of molten clay. That means that all the lakes and oceans are going to be made of molten clay. I don't know if there are lakes and oceans in a chaotic world, though. So we may not see any of those. Um, the biome controller is default, which means that it's just going to have regular biomes. Um, like we would have in the overworld. And it has features, orbs, tendrils, has shallow oceans, and dense caves. So those are just some random features that were selected. And our sun brightness is 1.0, which is the default. Our star brightness is 1.0. And then we have a sky color of black, and a fog color of white, and a cloud color of white. 
the celestial angle is zero. We're going to learn how to select all the features that we want when we create a dimension. Um, but let's just see what this one looks like as soon as this thing is done filling up. Wow, this is taking a long time. So the dimension builder, by the way, can receive up to 50,000 RF per side. So if you have a dimension that requires a lot of power, um, you can push power into it on every side up to 300,000 RF per tick. If you have a dimension that requires more, you're going to need more dimension builders, and we'll see how that would work in the near future. This guy's fully powered now, so it's safe for us to go into that dimension. And if we look in our dialing device, we'll see that we now have <laughs> this random number one matter receiver as a new destination. So we can dial into that, and there's our beam. Hooray! If we place a destination analyzer next to our matter transmitter, it'll change the color of the beam based on the level of safety of the destination. So right now the color is yellow, which basically means that this is not chunk loaded. So it's a safe, it, it's most likely a safe teleportation, but it's yellow meaning it's not chunk loaded. So like if we were to change the destination to our base, for instance, then we get green or bluish green or whatever that is telling us that it's chunk loaded and it's safe. Um, but if we do to random number one to random world number one, basically, we get a yellow thing telling us that it's safe, but it's not chunk loaded. Now, if it were unsafe, if this destination were out of power, then this beam would be red telling us, hey, you probably don't want to go in there. Um, another thing that we might want to bring with us just for safety's sake is a dimension monitor. Um, except that we can't make one yet until we get a dimensional shard. Um, so let's just check out this dimension. It should be safe, <laughs> I think. Okay, so here we are. Apparently it's noon. Oh, the celestial angle is 0, 0.0. So it's always daytime in this world. But as we can see, the sky is black. <laughs> and there's our orbs that we saw. And here's the uh, matter receiver that gets generated. Um, every time you create a new dimension, it comes with this little platform of light blue terracotta along with a matter receiver so that we always have a way to get here. And you can see that our clay, our molten clay ocean down here. Look at that. And then over here is a little dimlet building. These things are going to spawn all over the RF Tools Dimensions worlds randomly unless we tell it not to. This will be a great source of dimlets for us. So you can see there are three dimlets on the wall here. There's also a <laughs> redstone lamp. So let's see what we got. We got a material dimlet, peridot ore. And we got a another material dimlet, chiseled stone, brick soft, and we got a netherrack. Um, and then over here we have a bunch of dimlet parts. And we'll see how those work in a little bit. Along with a dimlet parcel, which is basically a little... Um, gift <laughs> a present for you use it well right click to get the gift so we right click on it and it gives us a bunch of dimlet parts which we saw floating around us um, one of them being this liquid type controller and we're going to see how all these work in a little bit one thing i didn't mention that's really really important is that whenever you go into a dimension always make sure that you have a way back so i mean one way to do that is to bring a matter transmitter with you and a dialing device or you can dial it in before you leave and then bring it with you um, the other is our advanced charge porter, which we always have with us. So no matter where we go, we're always going to have a way back. So now we're going to start getting into dimlets and being able to customize the worlds that we create. Um, so in order to do this, one of the things that we're going to want is a dimlet workbench. A dimlet workbench is going to allow us to build dimlets. And the way this works is there are these dimlets that we found a few of these dimlets in the dimlet houses or the dimlet buildings in the RF tools dimensions and some of these come already pre-made for us um, we get a lot of material dimlets because we have a lot of materials but then we also get these dimlet parts and we can put these parts together inside of a dimlet workbench in order to make dimlets and we get the dimlet parts from the buildings and we also get them from these dimlet parcels which we also get from the dimlet buildings and we can get these from loot chests and we can get them from endermen they're a rare drop from endermen so when we right click them we already saw that we do get a bunch of these dimlet parts and there are different types of dimlet parts that we're going to look at in a little bit um, but right now there's one part that we're going to need in order to craft our dimlet building and that is a base part that is this dimlet base part 
because that's part of our crafting recipe. So there's our Dimlet workbench. Um, this guy, does it need power? It does need power. Okay, so we are going to power this guy. By the way, the Dimension Inscriber does not require power, and neither does the Destination Analyzer, but everything else does. So this guy is pulling power right now, and when we set down our Dimlet workbench, we're going to be able to see all of the possible Dimlets that exist. Hooray! <laughs> so they're a little bit hard. They're a little bit hard to see because there are so many. But of course, we can search in here. Um, and what's nice is we can also search on Dimlet types. So let's say we want to see all the biomes. We can see all of our biomes. Um, and because I just typed in biome, we should be able to see it. Okay. And we can see all our controllers. So these are biome controllers. There are 13 different types of, of dimlets. <laughs> and we have to specify most of them when we build a d dimension, unless we want to allow RFTools dimensions to pick that particular feature for us randomly, or that particular aspect of the dimension randomly. So um, the first one, the most basic, would be the terrain. Oh, unfortunately, we have a bunch of <laughs> glass that's called terrain, but um, we can have amplified ter terrain, we could have cavern terrain. We'll probably see a lot of these today. We already saw the chaotic terrain. Um, we have a flat, we have a flooded cavern, and we have all these different types of terrains, right? Now, if we click on one of these, we'll see, or when we hover over one of these, we'll see th what's required um, in the tool tip below. Each dimlet is going to require six different things five different dimlet parts, and then one essence part. Oh. And we'll, we'll see what that is in, in very soon, actually. Um, so first we need the base part, and there's one of those. And then we're going to need a control circuit. The specific control circuit that we need is going to be based on how rare the dimlet is. So the dimlets can have a rarity value from 0 to 6, and the control circuit determines that rarity value. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we have the energy module. So the energy module is going to determine how much energy each one requires, a basic energy module. But then we also have regular and advanced. So the ones that have the advanced are going to use more power, and so on and so forth. And then we have the memory units. And the memory unit that we require is going to be based on the rarity. So like the f first couple levels of rarity are going to require the basic, and the next ones are going to be the regular and then the most rare ones are going to require the advanced memory unit and then we're going to need the controller so the controller is going to tell us what type of dimlet it is so for instance we're looking at biome dimlets right now at the top here um, that's going to require the biome controller we can get these by extracting them from existing dimlets so for instance we have a material dimlet ch chiseled stone we don't need that, really. I mean, we're not going to use that. <laughs> it's very unlikely that I'm ever going to want a material dimlet of chiseled stone. So we can put it up here, and then we can click Extract. It's going to use some power, and it's going to go through this process, and then it's going to give us these parts. Now, you can see we only got three of them, right? How come we only got three? There are five different parts, and then there's the essence part. You never get the essence part. You can never get an essence. You can never extract an essence part um, from a dimlet. You have to generate those in the world and we'll see how to in a bit um, and then there's a 60 percent chance that we're going to get each of the others um, with the dimlet workbench so you end up losing some of your dimlet parts um, until we infuse the dimlet workbench which we're going to do later um, but we can't yet <laughs> we're not at a point where we can infuse it yet because we don't have the required resources in order to infuse it but you can see we did get a material type controller we also got a basic energy module and we got a dimlet control circuit rarity zero. We didn't get the base. We didn't get the memory unit. Um, so we can extract all these dimlets that we don't that we don't want. Um, and then we can also the other nice thing about our dimlet workbench is it has storage for all of our dimlet parts. So we can throw our dimlet parts in there, and that'll give us a place to store them because that's the only place that we'll ever be able to use these. They are completely useless outside of the dimlet. Um, Dimlet workbench. So what I want to do, what I want to work toward, and, and as I'm doing this, we're going to see all the different types of dimlets and how they all work. But I would like to work toward making a, a normal world. 
So in order to do that, we're going to be able to craft a lot of the dimlets. So now if we look in the uh, in if we look in JEI, we can see that there are quite a few dimlets in here that we can craft. Um, some of these we won't be able to craft until later, but a lot of them, especially the ones that are kind of the regular default kind of stuff, um, we can we can craft just in a regular crafting table. But you can see some of them require these dimlet templates, which require dimensional shards, shards which we don't have yet. Um, we have to get those from RF Tools dimensions by mining in RF Tools dimensions. The first dimlet that I really want is a normal world dimlet, um, so that we don't end up with like a chaotic world or something like that. Because I want to make sure that we get a world that we can mine in. Um, so I want to have a terrain dimlet that where we can specify a stone base and probably liquid water or water liquid. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any controller dimlet parts um, for terrain. So I'm going to create another semi-random world just, just out of hope that we're going to get one that has a normal enough terrain that we're going to be able to do some decent mining. Um, these are the things that I can craft to make the world as normal as possible. I can give it weather, default weather so that we don't end up with like a stormy thing where it's raining all the time. Um, effect none so that we don't end up with something that has like some bad effects in it like hunger or, or something like that. Um, the default controller will just give us the normal overworld type biomes and then the feature none will make sure that it doesn't have any like additional features like other than just the normal default stuff. Um, we're going. Okay, so I've got that there. I'm going to call this random number two, <laughs> number two, and I'm going to store. Uh, and I'm just going to get this one out of here. We're probably never going to use that dimension again, so I'm just going to let it run out of power. Although there are things that we can do, and we'll look at this later, um, to get it to not produce or to not consume power unless we're there okay so that's been generated so let's do a shift right click <laughs> let's do a shift right click to see what we got so we've got terrain waves hmm I don't even know what that is let's check it out stone and water so we have the normal um, that so if this is like something that has a full ground and it's not like some kind of a weird void or island dimension we should be able to work everything else appears to be default and it's not specifying a celestial angle so that means that the sun is probably going to be moving around um, now I did I did put an advanced uh, I put an advanced blue connector on the bottom of our dimension builder so that it will be able to pull power a little faster and then I'm also pulling from our power cell on three sides now because the power cell will only do 5,000 RF per side so we should be able to push a total of 15,000 RF per, per tick into this thing now. So this guy is, it's requiring 62 RF per tick. If we want to disassemble this thing, we can actually put it in our dimensional inscri ins dimension inscriber and say extract, and we'll get all of our dimlets back. So just something to note, if we were to put another dimlet in here or take one out and then store, we would end up with a completely different dimension. The dimension itself is defined by the dimlets in it. So if we were to take another one of our empty dimension tabs and put the exact same dimlets in it, we would end up with the same dimension. So both of those dimension tabs would take us to the exact same place. So it would be one dimension, and we would have two tabs um, that basically point to that same dimension. If we have a dimension that requires more RF, then we can um, pump into it with a single dimension builder. Um, that's how we would do that. If we want to create another dimension with the exact same dimlets, but we want it to be a new dimension, then we would use the digit dimlets, which are ones that we can craft. And they, they basically add no features. They do change nothing um, in the dimension itself, but they just make it unique. <laughs> Move things around in here a little bit. I didn't like the teleporter right in the middle of the floor. We're going to go to random two. We're going to dial once. And this should be a pretty safe dimension, so I don't think we have to worry too much <laughs> about anything. Famous last words. Okay, so this is waves. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Oh, boy. The sun is going down already. 
Okay, well, whatever. That's fine. Um, so this is the waves dimension. It looks... Or the waves terrain. It actually looks fairly normal. So we might be able to do some mining in here. Gravel. What? <laughs> oh, okay. So if we see any ores at all... We do. Okay. Yay! So we can mine here and we will find dimensional shards in this dimension. So I'm probably going to go get my builder and do a bunch of mining here so that we can get a whole bunch of dimensional shards. So there's a dimensional shard ore. Hooray! And if this one, let's see, that one's got fortune too, so I guess I'll use this one. When we break it, we get... <laughs> we get an achievement. Exotic miner. Mine dimensional shards. And we got six of them. Usually we would only get like two or three, I think, um, from a dimensional shard. Or, and they are level 40 and below, if I remember correctly, in any um, RF tools dimension. Oh, I see another one there. So actually, let me just, I know this is terrible and some of you are going to cringe, but I'm going to break this one without fortune just so that we can see what we would normally get. Okay, so we got three. So our fortune actually doubled it for us. So I have our shape card set up to mine out an area from level 40 downward, which is actually above us a little bit. So I'm just going to get this started, and we'll see what we get. Hopefully we'll get lots of dimensional shards. But they are pretty rare. I mean, as you saw, that whole tunnel that we dug down here, we only had two ores. Okay, I'm hearing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm here in Black's break. Oh, here's one. Wow, that's fast. Holy crap. So we mined out this entire area. So let's go home and see what we got from this. So we ended up with 132. <laughs> Just a little over two stacks. So not a whole lot, but that's it's enough to get us going. It's enough to get us moving on to the next phase. So now that we have dimensional shards, we can make the activity probe. Which we can place in this dimension. So now we've got this dimension running. And I think I'm going to hold on to this dimension because it's pretty useful. It'll be useful for getting dimensional shards, at least until we get something better. Um, but as we can see, it is costing us 62 RF per tick all the time. Even though we're not in there, we're not doing anything with it. So what we can do is we can go into that dimension... Actually, let's sleep first. By the way, when a dimension is using the normal time, it's going to match the overworld. So if we go there now, it's going to be morning. And we can take this or this activity probe, and all we have to do is just set it down. Anywhere in the dimension. It doesn't matter where we put it. <laughs> it doesn't require power or anything. And what that'll do is it'll monitor the activity of the dimension and if there is no activity in the dimension if no chunks are loaded if no players are here the dimension will stop using power so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to spend some time going around this dimension to find these guys to find these little dimlet buildings and collect as many dimlets as i can so i explored all this area and you can see all these little gray squares those are the dimlet buildings so i i hit quite a few of them so let's go home and see what we got well, we got a lot of stuff. <laughs> nice. So we're going to need a better way to look at this stuff, I think. To organize my dimlets, I'm using the modular storage from RF Tools um, because it allows us to look at everything and see what it all is, and it also sorts it by the type it is. So all of our biomes are on the top because they're in alphabetical order. There used to actually be a nice module that we could add to it that would group them really nicely, but this is good enough. So we've got our biome dimlets, we've got our controller dimlets, which basically tell us how the biomes are going to be distributed. We have effect dimlets, we have feature dimlets, and we can see some of them that we've got here. <laughs> caves, dense caves, lakes, scattered orbs, volcanoes, and the, the effects you can see, some of them are bad, and some are good. We've got damage boost, poison 3, regen 1, weakness, wither 2. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a pretty... Hostile dimension. We have liquid dimlets and material dimlets. Um, 
These are basically modifiers to other dimlets, and we'll see how those work in a little bit. And then we've got sky dimlets, and these are all the dimlets that basically specify like the color of the sky, what kind of sun and moon we're going to have, whether it's going to be big or small. There's also planets and other like celestial bodies that we can have, um, different colored clouds. We can have an ender sky, different types of stars. We have one structure dimlet, and that's none. And then we have a bunch of terrain dimlets. We haven't got the normal terrain dimlet, but I think I know of a way that we can get it um, without having to find it. And then we have a normal time dimlet, and then we have the a default weather dimlet. I think we have at least one of each type of dimlet, and then we have the capability to make lots of other ones based on what we have here. We've got most of the rarities except for four and six. We did good one control circuit of rarity five, so we can now make dimlets of rarity five. Um, we did also got an ed energy module, an advanced energy module, only one. Um, we got some memory units. We got one advanced memory unit, so so we could probably end up making one rarity five. Um, dimlet if we want to. And then we have all these different um, type controllers which specify the type of dimlet. And the modular storage, I've got a external storage going into it from our refined storage system. And then with the modular storage we have these filter modules that we can use. And I have the filter module set um, to, I have a single dimlet in there and then I just told it to ignore metadata even though I actually, I mean I told it to ignore NBT data even though I think the differences between these are metadata, not MBT data, but it seems to ignore both. Before we go much further, I want to make a machine infuser. This is going to allow us to use our dimensional shards, or <laughs> the few that we have. Let's just grab one stack for now. I want to keep some around. Um, in order to infuse machines, so I would like to infuse our dimlet workbench, and if we pick it up with a wrench, it should keep all of its stuff, all of its inventory and everything. And then we can put it in the machine infuser. And it is going to require some RF. And then we put some dimensional shards in the machine infuser. And you can see that it is slowly infusing <laughs> this machine. So I'm not going to be able to infuse this to 100%. Um, but I'm going to try to get it as much as possible. The, the more infused our dimlet workbench is, the fewer dimlet parts we'll lose. Because right now we lose 40% of the dimlet parts so that infused us to 25 percent so we would need four stacks altogether in order to entirely infuse our dimlet workbench but i want to put this terrain dimlet in here and i'm hoping that we get a terrain controller please please it would it would actually oh we did yay terrain terrain type controller so now we should actually be able to make a normal terrain dimlet if we want to. So to do that, um, if we look in our dimlet workbench and we look at well, terrain terrain normal, we'll see that we're going to, well, and we can double click on it and it'll place all of the dimlet things in here, but there's this one piece that we need and it's an essence. And it's going to be a terrain essence. So here it is, the terrain absorber. <laughs> so what this is going to do is we're going to place this in the world. Oh, what do we need here? We need a machine frame. And it's going to absorb the terrain of the world into itself. So if we, we can just set this here because this is a normal world, so it should give us a normal terrain. If we just place that there, and we'll see right now it's at 0%, and slowly, now we're at 1%, so yeah, it's working. So slowly this is going to absorb terrain normal. We can see in the one probe that it says terrain normal. Hooray! There's also a biome absorber. It works the exact same way. You just place the block in a biome. There are material absorbers, and we are going to be getting into those later. They will basically consume two stacks of a material. And then there's liquid absorbers, feature absorbers. So this will absorb a random feature in the current dimension. And then there's a time absorber. So for instance, if we wanted to make a uh, dimension that's always noon, we would set a time absorber. Actually, you know what, let's do that. Okay, so for the time absorber, we could just set up a daylight sensor. And if we want to catch noon, the daylight sensor is gonna, I'll put a redstone signal of 15. So I've got 15 redstone 
dust here. We can put our time absorber right there, and it's going to get a pulse when this thing reaches 15. Um, it needs to get 10 pulses in order to become, in order to absorb the time. Um, this guy's done. We are at 100%. We now have a terrain absorber of terrain normal. Nice. So if we go in here. Um, and put that here. We see we have a terrain dimlet normal. Nice. It's now absorbing noon. And you do have to make sure that it only gets a redstone signal at noon because it will start to go backwards if you start giving it redstone signals at different times of the day. Um, because it's, it's assuming that you want to change it <laughs> to something else if you're giving it a redstone signal at the wrong time. Well, one thing to keep in mind, I've been coming to this dimension a lot <laughs> because I'm doing some mining here. Uh, this matter receiver is not being powered, so you can see we're down to 75 kilo RF per tick. Um, it's going to run out of power eventually. I'm actually going to move it down here to my mining area so that when we teleport to this dimension, we'll teleport right here. And I'm going to put it on top of, well, I'll put it next to this power thing. So that it gets powered up. Hooray! So I've decided I'm going to set up a silk touch quarry so I can get a bunch of dimensional shard ore. But we are out of time right now. So in the next episode, we are going to make a couple of resource dimensions, including a... Dimensional Shards Dimension and perhaps a Draconium Dimension. We're also going to take a look at how to do some Dimension Cleanup. So I hope you join me for that. If you do have any questions, comments, ideas, whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and to join me next time. Thanks for watching.